In the world of laser engraving, when would it make sense to purposely defocus your diode laser? Today, we're gonna to find out. Hey everyone, my name is Sam and welcome back to SamCraft. In today's video, I'm going to be exploring purposely taking my Xtool D1 Pro out of focus, setting it to limits that the manufacturer does not recommend in order to give myself better quality engravings on my slate coasters. For today's test, I'm gonna be using my X-Tool laser, but this is not specific to X-Tool. This is something you can do with absolutely any laser, whether it be a diode, an infrared, or a CO2 laser. Finding the sweet spot and focal point of your machine is going to allow you to get better quality results in the end, and it's something that honestly is good to do. Just like we do tests on speed and power for all of our materials, we should probably be doing focus tests too. For this test, I'm going to be using some 3mm basswood. This is stuff that I have around the workshop laying around, but it's also something that will give me uniform even steps up for my laser focusing, and when I find that sweet spot, it's easy to keep this around as a spacer card. There is no software portion involved with this test. We are purely working in the real world, the world of real, and just spacing our laser. For this project, you can use any design you want. I'm going to choose to use a coaster design that I do often, one that is fairly detailed, but also has quite a bit of engraving space. That'll allow me to see more of the engraving surface to gauge the quality and judge how the appearance is overall. The first thing to do, and this is very, very important, is to make sure whatever surface you're engraving on, in my case, a grid board, make sure that is dead flat, not having any bows, and make sure it is sitting level. It is no point to go through this process if you're trying to get your focus dialed in. If on one area your grid board is flat, and as you move across, it bows or moves. What I'm going to do next is take some of my blank coasters here. Whenever I get large orders in, there no doubt is a percentage of those that are not good enough to sell, but I keep them on hand for tests just like this. So I have one such coaster, it's fine for testing. I'm going to scratch a line in the middle because I'm going to double dip this chip. I'll do one test on the left, one test on the right, and allow me to get two tests out of one device. The good and bad thing about Slate it is as easy to mark. It is very simple to put some scratches on that with a piece of metal and give myself a dividing line. With my coaster marked here, I can now take it over to the laser. I'm gonna be doing this test at zero height, which is using the factory kickstand for focusing. What the manufacturer will tell me is perfectly in focus. I'll do it at zero. I'm gonna raise it up to three millimeters, six millimeters, and nine millimeters. Definitely pushing the limits to find if there is a sweet spot with my laser or if it's great right out of the factory. All right, so here's the little kickstand on this X tool. You flip it down and then you drop it down to your surface. Once it's resting like that, you then tighten up the thumb screw to the left and you're in focus. I have to be careful when I do this because that metal will scratch the slate. It's stuff that wipes off easy afterwards. It's just an extra step. All right, that is focused to zero. Now we'll home the machine and we'll run this job over here.
Real quick, as you guys watch this video, you're going to see a sneak peek of a prototype I'm working on. You're going to see there's a grid board on this X tool. This is the first version. I probably go through about two to three, sometimes a lot more versions before I officially publicly announce them. So sit tight. This one is not yet ready. I'll put a link in the description though to where you can find it when it is. And then I'll update that text down there to say, you know, you're either going to see a link or you're going to say still work in progress. So if you look below, you see the link, it's ready. If you don't, hang tight. It'll be ready soon, I hope. There'll also be a separate video on that. So you don't have to worry about constantly coming back to this video and looking and watching for some link to pop up. I'll make a video whenever I'm done prototyping and have built my final version grid board. Okay. Back to the show. All right, I have my four test. Zero, three millimeter, six millimeter, and nine millimeters, all from what should be focused and above. Obviously, it's kind of difficult to lower it down because you'll crash into your object. Looking at these, and it's gonna be kind of hard for the camera to pick it up, probably. Um, it's always easier to see things in real life than on camera. But looking at these, I definitely think that six millimeter looks the best. It has the most sharpest outcome. It has the most uniform engraving it just looks the best to me what do you guys think what do you see on camera i mean between three and six that's that's definitely the sweet spot the zero point of the engraving looks okay but when i compare it to the three and six it just doesn't look as good as those so for me my sweet spot is between three and six millimeters above what should be the focal point since i engrave slate coasters and they are never the same height when they're over here on my grid board i'm going to use the three millimeter spacer and I'm going to place that on the tallest of the set of four at each batch when I run it. That way, the tallest will be great and fine at three. And if anything is slightly lower, it's only going to be in that sweet spot from three to six millimeters. I don't really have more than three millimeter variance in height with my batches. If I do, I swap them out for others. I try and get them as dead on as I can with each other. But this, I think, is going to work good for me. All right, it's time for the pudding to hit the pan, Sam. I've got my set of four coasters. These are ready for a customer's order. I'm gonna go ahead and plop them down on the laser, find the tallest one of the four, put my three millimeter basswood spacer, focus the laser, lock it in, and run this job. Let's see how good it turns out. Fresh off the laser and these look sharp. I am very happy with the results across the four of them, the little bit of variance in height, focusing it, defocusing it, made it look great, wonderful, awesome. I now have the X-Tool dialed in and I'm ready for it to be my new coaster production machine. Previously, the Otor Laser Master 2 Pro was sitting here. The X-Tool is the new guy. It's kind of been sitting in laser town. I gotta make custom orders anyway, so I decided to use it and mm, I don't know guys, I'm liking it so far. The number one thing I like about it is its speed. It is twice as fast as the Otor. This took about 17 minutes to run. The Otor regularly took over 30 minutes to run four set of coasters, very easily 30 minutes. So time is money. We don't have much of both. We might as well maximize what we can where we can. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video for Sam Craft. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. If you got any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Otherwise, take care. I'll see you guys next time in the workshop. It's kind of dumb to throw the actual customer. I'm glad I didn't drop it. If you're watching this, Sam almost showed off and messed up. He's going to put this in bubble wrap, though, so it's nice and safe, and it's heading your way now.